Hey guys, I'm here over here in uh, Airport CEO, and today I wanted to give you a short overview of the different sections that you have available to you for building in Airport CEO. Uh, I'm going to go over just a little bit, uh, not in detail, but just going to cover each one of these sections. Alright, so the first one we have is, Air is the terminal section. Uh, that's going to let you build the main infrastructure around your terminal. So you have the foundation here. That's what builds the big room or the big section here. So like this entire section here of the terminal, uh, which is about 60 by 30. Uh, that is the built initially by the foundation. You also have the demolition, which if I use that, that would destroy the entire whatever I select. Uh, it's the same button essentially as this, but uh, it just lets you do it from inside this part. All right, so next we have floors, and there's actually four different sections of floors. So you have concrete and and marble, uh, the stone type floors here in this first section. The second, second section is going to be your tiles, so different kinds of tiles here. And then your third section is going to be carpet or floor mats. Uh, you can see here. The blue, the dark blue, and the light blue here, those are floor mats. Alright, and then the fourth section here is going to be wood types. Uh, this, These darker floors here, those are dark wood. Uh, specifically this one here, dark wood. Alright, the next section is going to be your walls, which it's very simple, it's just a wall. So, uh, keep in mind on this I am building with no construction crew, uh, just for the sake of being able to build quickly. Uh, but if you had construction crews enabled, it would put a dark gray outline and the construction crews would come and build it in sections. All right, so the next thing we've got here is your doors. So you've got this small wooden door, which are looks similar to this. Actually, they look exactly like this. Uh, the second one is your sliding doors, your smaller sliding doors, which I don't think I have actually in place here. Let me put one down for you. It looks like that. That's the small one. It's only two tiles wide. And then the third one is your larger sliding door. Uh, that's usually used for your main entrances. It's going to be the three, four tiles wide. And it's nice and wide for a lot of people to come through. All right, then you got your windows. You got a small window, which will look like this. That's uh four tiles wide, about the same width as a door. Get your medium window. That's going to be six tiles wide. And then you got your large window. And that's 12 tiles wide. All right. Next we've got a trash can. And you can place this pretty much anywhere. Uh, but it's really effective in your shops, which we will look at in a bit. All right, next we've got the vending machines. We have food and drinks. Drinks are the dark gray, brownish color, and food is the bright green color. And you can see I've placed them uh, various places around the airport just to show off what they look like. Next one is the escalator. And you can see I've got them placed over here. You only really need one, but I have two just because uh, you also have the stairs next to that. And there are different kinds of stairs as well. There are small stairs and medium stairs. So I've got small stairs here. Actually, those are medium stairs and small is basically just one of them. So if I were to put one more stair next to that. You can see the small and the medium. Alright, 
moving on, we have the Walkolators, which are different lengths depending on what you need. So you have the small, medium, or large. So we'll put down a small, a medium, and a large. And you can see they're different lengths for you know, whatever you need for your airport capabilities. All right, next we've got an elevator. And these are different uh, okay yeah <laughs> so uh, the elevator you just basically just put it uh, whatever level you need it at and then you put it at and extend it up to whichever floor you need so you extend it so I placed it here and it should be usable Notice that the elevator does come with walls right there, and you can just build walls around it if you don't want them looking at the backside. All right, uh, there's some zoning issue there for some reason, but we'll come back to that later, I think. All right, and then we've got street lights, which are uh, probably needed here. So we have different quality of lights. You have poor. Uh, the small one, you have a medium one, or slightly more expensive one, the medium size, and then large ones, and you have different qualities, which they kind of look the same as far as the amount of light they produce, but they're different kinds. All right, then we got also have floodlights, which have uh, different effects on them. So you have a corner, a center, and then an array. So the corner one is meant to be in a corner pointing towards the center and then the array is made more for being on the sides pointed towards the center and then the center one can be in the middle and have light all the way around it all right well, next two things we have are fences and fence gates so we have a fence which is built just like walls uh, just click and drag it wherever you need it and then you have a fence gate that you can allow contractors to pass through without letting wildlife into your airport grounds, which is useful. So, for example, I've got contractors here, so if I wanted to let them through, I can put a gate right here, and then the contractors would just walk right through that, but animals would not get through. All right, that covers the terminal section. Next, we have these zones and rooms. Uh, these are a lot smaller, or a lot sh smaller section. So if I enable my zone overlay, you can see that the orange one is your staff zones. Uh, like this section right here, this is only for staff. You've got your red, which is your secure. It's a lot brighter than it used to be. Uh, you do have to have checkpoints between secure and unsecure, which I'll get to in a second. And then also have international, which looks really nasty combined, combined with secure zones, but uh, it is what it is. All right, that's the zones. And then in addition to that, we have the room areas. So you have a bathroom, which you have to zone a bathroom before you can build the portions of it so I have two bathrooms here a couple more bathrooms there and so on all right in addition to that there are staff rooms which is where the staff will go when they're not working so for example I have a staff room right here which it's hard to tell because it's in a staff zone but that is a staff room so there's nothing in it 
but the staff member will go sit in that room when he's not working otherwise. Otherwise, all right. Then you have food and shop rooms, which I don't have any set up. Uh, but the food is where passengers will go either before they get on their planes up in the secure zones or after they get off the plane before they pick up their baggage. Same thing with uh, shops, they'll go buy souvenirs and stuff. All right, and then we have the airplane lounge, which I have actually not messed with yet, but airplane lounges are good for uh, business and luxury passengers so that they can, uh, similar to like a food or a shop, but it's intended for before you get on a plane. Uh, in fact, I, a lot of real life uh, areas, they have exclusive access into boarding the plane from there. Um, so you have an airplane lounge there. And the last one is the baggage claim area, which is necessary for baggage claim. So if you have your baggage bays up here, then they have to send your baggage over to the baggage claim so that the passengers can pick it up. All right, and that is all for the rooms and zones. Next up, we have the infrastructure. First thing we've got is a world entrance tunnel. And the game comes with one here. So you can change different aspects about that, or you can build our own. And the tunnel must be placed outside the world. Helps if I get it correct. There you go. So I can build my own in addition to or replacing that one uh, if I need if I need to move it somewhere else. All right, then you got the public roads, which can be asphalt or concrete. Mine are con or, uh, asphalt here, just to differentiate between the two. Uh, you also have service roads, which are inside your airport and going to different buildings. They also can be grass, asphalt, or concrete. Next, you have your tunnels, which you can build a public tunnel for your public access area or uh, road tunnels for your service sections, which I use a fair amount. So I've got one right here, which goes down to the underground area to go underneath the airport, or actually under the public access area, just so that it's easier to get from one side to the other without having to go all the way around. All right, we've also got a one-way road, which you can put on either service or public roads. Uh, I actually have some right here, so, so that my um, passengers or people, when they come in, they have to go around this way when they come through the bus stop area, just to keep it nice and organized. All right, we've also got a vehicle checkpoint, which allows transitioning between the public and uh, access our service roads so you have to have this there so that they can see it or i mean so that they can get from one side to the other all right next we've got the sidewalk which you can put pretty much anywhere you want passengers to be able to walk on the so i have a nice big sidewalk here uh, sidewalks from the road pickups to the door that sort of thing all right we've got the crosswalks we have uh, the original, which crosses two lanes, and then you have the smaller one, which only crosses one lane, uh, which I don't have any of the smaller ones in place, but you can see the medium one there. All right, got the contractor and delivery sites. So the contractor one is here. Uh, that's the drop-off point, so that if you bring in contractors, they will come in and they'll drop off here, any goods that you need for building will come in and drop off here. Uh, you can build more than one, but you must have at least one to be able to build anything. So I would recommend building, if you're going to move these from their original spot, like the original ones, I think we're like up here somewhere, uh, build the new ones that you want and then delete the old ones so that you don't uh, hurt your ability to build things. All right, next we've got the bus stop, which is here. Um, you can actually switch the sides on it, and you can see it has a 250 person queue, and it has an average for uh, how often things are transported. Uh, in addition to the bus stops, we also have standard and 
glass uh, shelters. You can put those up here if you want to. You don't have to. Uh, just so that people have somewhere to stand under shelter, I guess. Uh, we also have car stops, which are... Do I have any car stops? I do. There we are. So the car stops are very similar to the bus stops, except they're about half the size. They're only uh, two road tiles wide, whereas the bus stops are four. And regular cars will come and drop off or pick up people. Next we have the taxi stops, which are over here for me. And I have several of those. Uh, same thing with the car stops. These are where taxis will come in and pick up people. I right. also have parking lots, which I have plenty of. Uh, you have the ability to set them as long-term or short-term. You can also set them as staff only. Um, and so you can customize where you want different, car, different kinds of cars to park. So for example, this one is a passenger only, and it is a long term. And you can see it's getting a lot more cars than this one, which is passengers only and short term, because these passengers are taking long trips, so they need the long term parking. All right, and then the last thing in this section is the subway entrance, which I just plop down over here, and it'll just randomly generate passengers uh, they'll, they'll just leave through there and come out don't have to worry about cars coming in and leaving and all that and that is the infrastructure and transportation section next we have the aircraft infrastructure section which is where most of the fun stuff is so the first thing is the air traffic control towers so you have a small one which we can see here we have the medium one, which is a little bit bigger. And then we have the large one, which is the biggest one that is available. And of course, me being the overkill person I am, I have the large one in, actually installed. All right, and so next we have the runways, grass, asphalt, and concrete for the small ones. Mediums and large can be asphalt or concrete and I have a concrete medium runway here and then I have a large concrete runway up here and you can see that there are different options so the small one will only allow small but you can do either general aviation or commercial the medium runway will allow small or medium and again you can do general aviation or commercial uh, you also have options for changing the operational mode and the takeoff mode. So the takeoff mode, uh, I don't want to mess with right now, but you have options there that you can change if you need to. Uh, the large runway will allow all three types if you allow it and can do general aviation and commercial. So basically the large runway can do everything and then the small and medium ones are limited. For every one runway, you have upgrades that you can build. So you can build bird strike prevention, you can build approach lights, which I will add now. And that adds these extra little lights here on the ends, uh, both ends there. You can build pappy lights, which are the uh, approach lights. And then you can change from asphalt to concrete and back uh, as you need to. And then I'm going to go ahead and build the approach lights there. The when In the original game, they actually came with it, but now it's an upgrade that you can do at your convenience. All right, so we have the runways there, and now we have the runway ramps. And again, we have the small ones that you can do as grass, asphalt, or concrete. Mediums must be either asphalt or concrete. And most of my ramps are uh, going to be concrete. Uh, these are these ramps are actually the entrance ways. So you have different styles that you can build, and then the different sizes as well. So you have the diagonal ones that are angled one way, and then as well you have the other angled which I don't seem to have. Okay, 
and then you have the one that goes straight in. And if you look at them, it's a little bit difficult to see in the dark at night, but the the line here will actually go up into the runway and then level out uh, straight on with the runway so that you can see the path that the aircraft will take. The same thing here, it'll it'll come in straight and then turn either direction. So uh, these are useful if you want to just come straight into the airport and then go whichever direction you need. All right, next we have the aircraft stands, which you can build the small stands, again, with grass, asphalt, or concrete. And you can see how the planes will orient on the small stand. They will come in from this side, go around to the left, and they'll stop pointing this way. And then when they leave, they'll just come finish going around the circle and continue going. That's the small stands. Medium stands and the large stands, they will come in straight and need to be pushed back out with a pushback truck which you can see the pushback truck there is ready because this plane is about ready to take off probably boarding at the moment uh yes they're waiting on that last passenger all right so next to the stands we have the hangars which we have small hangars uh, which i can go ahead and build somewhere maybe Go ahead and build one here. Build a couple of small ones there. Those are the small hangers. Then there are medium hangers. And then there is a large hanger, which I cannot even fit in the available space. All right, so the large hangar is very large. In addition to that, we have the taxiway foundations, which is how you build all of the nice little paths around your airport. And then you have your taxiway path. So you'll notice when I built these hangars, they have these red markings here. This red looks like a little plane that says, I don't have a path. So it's this blue line that goes down the middle. You can just select this taxiway path click in the middle here and then just drag to wherever you need and you can go either direction so from here to there or from there to here whichever way you want to go doesn't matter and then once you draw that it'll connect um, some places have smaller path requirements than others so for example this one I had to go here and this one it joined up here so it worked out uh, in addition Anything you need, anything you build that requires service entrance will have something similar to it. So we'll go back here to the service road and we'll build that entrance there. And I like to do a little, a little loop just so that it's nice and efficient from either direction, but that's just me. All right, back to the aircraft infrastructure. Next, we have the vehicle depots, which are where all of your service vehicles will go. And you can see one here. Uh, they do not build with the concrete underneath them. They build just grass, so like this. Uh, and you can use the concrete to fill it in, which I will show you in just a minute. In addition to the depots, you have the vehicle service parking lot, which also builds as grass. And again, you can fill it in with concrete or asphalt, however you want. All right, the service car stop and the airside shuttle bus stop, those are intended for remote stands, which I do not have any that are commercial. Uh, these should be placed next to your airport. Uh, if I don't have any space here to show it to you, but should place these next to your airport so that the passengers and the staff members can just walk onto the stand and then they can drive to wherever the remote stand is. So you can see that, I'll go ahead and place these here. So you, these, you can change the direction if you need to. So that the vehicle will come in from the right side or the left side. Alright, that's the wrong category, 
There we go. Alright, so next we have the fuel depots. We have a small and medium size of both the jet or the AV gas, which is mostly for general aviation. And then you have the medium, uh, you have the, the small ones for both types, and you have the medium for both types. The Jet A1 being for mostly for commercial, and then AV gas mostly being for general aviation, although there are aircraft that don't have any here, but, but there are some of the general aviation aircraft that actually do use uh, a Jet A1 fuel. So you, if you're running general aviation, you may need both. If you're running commercial only, you'll only need the Jet A1. All right, and then you have the fuel depots, like I said, uh, which is the middle one here. And then you have the fuel tanks, which are the add-on pieces that give you a little bit extra fuel capacity. All right, next we have the catering and waste depots, which are mostly uh, passively running. Uh, you base you build them uh, with a both of these will need, actually this one needs service entrance. This is the waste depot here. Uh, so it'll need service entrance here for the trash removal. And then it's got four uh, drop-offs for the trash trucks from the that come from the planes. Uh, this is the food depot, or the catering depot. It needs a public entrance on this side. And then there are five pick up points for the food trucks which you can see them coming in to pick up their food. And if you look really closely you can actually see the trays of food being moved into the trucks. They're just like conveyor belts going in. And they will automatically come here, pick up the food and take it out. Uh, what I like to do is have one depot really close by that is primarily for catering trucks. So you can see all of these catering trucks um, are sitting in here. There's some other stuff in there, but it's primarily for catering trucks. So that when a plane comes in, calls for it, they just come right out here, go pick up the food, and then go wherever they need to go. Um, this one was supposed to be for the trash trucks, but it, it ends up being that they don't really care where they go. They, they'll just go straight to the plane and pick up trash. So... But the catering trucks always have to come to the depot first, so it's good to have a depot that's just for them right next to the catering depot that, that they can just come right out and pick up food and then go where they need to go after that. Alright, so the last thing, or the last major depot here, is the de-icing system. Uh, there are three different sizes of pads, one for each size of plane, small, medium, and large. Uh, the large one is basically like a, the size of a stand, a little bit different dimensions, but it's roughly the same size as a stand, about one tile difference. Um, so the planes will come in, de-icing trucks will go out and spray them down with de-icing fluid to keep them from freezing up when they fly. There's also a de-icing fluid depot, uh, which we can show you here. It's got one drop-off point for the main truck and then it's got uh, four small ones for the de-icing trucks themselves all right which I think this airport's in a warm climate so I don't need them it never gets cold enough all right then you got the weather stations you got the small one and you got a larger a larger one which is still relatively small by comparison but So we can see it here. I've got the, oh, sorry, that's a different thing. So you got the small one here and then the, the large one there. Next to that, we've got the radar towers. So there's a medium radar, radar tower and then the large radar tower, which is somewhat larger. And if you zoom in real close, you can hear the sounds from it. All right, and then that last, or not last. <laughs> Next we've got the asphalt and concrete tiles uh, which is how I fill in for some of these areas here like the uh, the depots here. I just click and drag around it and it fills in concrete and makes it looks, look nice and pretty. 
Uh, you can do the same thing with conk or uh, asphalt there with the parking lot. Make the parking lot look nice. Uh, you can override it with whatever you want. It looks good. I actually like it. The parking lot looks better with asphalt, so you just click and drag and, and rewrite it. All right, next we got the decorations here. This one is just a block. And then we've also got a fence and an ILS system, which is mostly for landing purposes. So we'll put that over here. This doesn't actually do anything though, so it's just for decoration. And then the last thing here, the actual last thing in this category is a windsock, which will just point in the direction wherever the wind is blowing. Uh, fun little fact that the, sec the different sections here actually will show you the speed of the wind. So if it's only showing this section, it's a certain speed. If it's going the full length, then it's much higher wind. Uh, at least in real life, this one just seems to kind of blow in whatever direction it wants. All right, so that is the aircraft infrastructure section. And next we have the conveyor belt system, which I have covered a little bit more in detail in another video. However, uh, just like in the zones and rooms, we have the baggage claim area, and then you have the different conveyor belt types. You have the main conveyor belt, you have escalators that go up and down, you have a tilt tray, and then you have a high-speed version of the main conveyor belts, uh, which I have several conveyor belts down here. You also have some scanners, which I can show you here. You have the main uh, baggage scanner one, which is the first one that everything should go through. You have the specific standards, scanners for organics, guns, explosives, drugs, and money. So I have one of each of those. And then you have scanning station three, which is a manual scanner. So you have a security guard that must be on duty to actually use these. Uh, if they did whatever gets through the other two layers, we'll go through that and then they'll make that final decision to send it to the baggage destroyer, which is over here. Anything that goes in there is gone and passengers are unhappy, but everybody is safe. And so other people would be happier. All right, the last thing in this section is the baggage bay, which is, I have two of these, just for one for each side of the airport, because it's split pretty much down the middle as uh, standard and international, domestic and international. So two different baggage bays to handle that. Uh, the baggage, all the baggage will go into one of these bays, whichever side they're supposed to be on. Baggage carts will come grab it, take it to the planes, uh, they'll drop it off on the other side if it's incoming um, and then it goes to the baggage claim area. Alright, that's it for the baggage system. I do have another video that talks in detail about that if you want to go see that. Alright, next is the staff area, which again you have the staff room and the staff zone, which are also in the zones and room section. And the last thing you have is an office desk which I will plop down over here. And that's all it is. Uh, when they're in the room, they'll go sit at the computer and do paperwork. And that's it for the staff section. Next is the desks section. We have several different kinds of desks. You have information desks, both small and medium. I have a couple mediums here, three mediums here. And you can see there's two guys working at each one. So passengers will come and talk to them. There's also flight information displays, which are just screens. And you can see that there. And I have them up against the wall, but they, they don't have to be. You can have them sitting in the middle of the room if you want to. Back to back like that. Make it look like a real airport, I guess. All right, then you got the check-in desks. So there are small ones self check-in then there's medium and baggage drop so you can see several of the self check-ins there and then the baggage drops which there's a lot of people using those and then there's the medium ones here 
and they have a person who checks in and then the conveyor belt that goes back into the baggage system. The small one does not have any sort of uh, conveyor belt with it. It's just a, a check-in so that they would have to go use the baggage drop-off. All right, and then the last thing is the boarding desks. You have a small self-boarding gate and a medium, which I think I have at just mediums here. Yeah, these are just mediums. So that uh, when they're boarding, there's, yeah. So they have two people there and they'll just come on on either side. The small ones, uh, they just have the one side. These are basically two small ones stacked together. And then the self check-in is just an automatic one where they just walk through it and go. All right, that's it for the desks section. The security section is next. And we have the secure zones. We also have international zones so that they can handle both of those. You have three different kinds of security checkpoints. You have the small one, which is basically just a metal detector. You have a medium one, which is a metal detector and a scanner. And then you have a large one, which is, a, these are mediums. So you can see that they have that. And then the large one has a larger uh, 360 degree uh, scanner on it. Um, the, like the new the newer ones that they have so you can see that there all right and then next to that you have the security exit so it looks like this they'll just walk through once they get through they would have to go all the way back around and go back through security to get wherever they want all right then you have customs and you can see um, the orientation that you put these determines whether they're entrances or exits they use the same ones for both you have the manned one which looks like this. They have the guy standing here. They walk up to him, talk to him, and then go through the little cross hash section. And it works the same, like I said, for the direction that, that it crosses the zone will determine whether it's an entrance or an exit. Uh, they also have the self checkpoint. So they just come in and do their little thing and, and leave. Then you also have the police stations and the emergency response station. So if I come over here, you can see my fire station here, which I have ambulances and fire trucks at. Uh, this one has four parking spaces. So if you need more than four emergency vehicles, you may want more than one station. I also have a police station. That's another emergency response station. So I have one on each side. Uh, this is a police station which has spots for eight vehicles uh, you can tell these guys down here with security patrols you can tell them to uh, go patrol different areas and you can create and edit that you can also tell your security officers who are inside the airport to go patrol different areas as well with that section but that's not where we are right now all right, so that's the end of the security section there. Next is bathrooms. So I do have bathrooms here. Uh, you can, you have to select the area first. So if you wanted to, I select, for example, this area right here, four by eight, created that. And then you can put down a regular toilet for sitting down, a urinal for standing up, a sink for washing your hands, and then a dryer for drying them. And I have, uh, I have them split for male and female, but you can do a mixed bathroom. You can also select for uh, both passengers and staff, or you can do staff only or passengers only, however you want to do that. All right, so that is bathrooms. Next is shops. We have the shop room and we have shop counter, and we have different kinds of shelves, which I don't have any shops built in this airport because it was not built for full demonstration. Uh, but we have the basic, nice, wall-mounted, pedestal, basic, and another basic. So these are small, these four are small ones. There's large, and you know, I will just throw one down here.
Okay. I'll just do a... And the size of the room also dictates the contracts that you can get. So I'll do a 20 by 20 here. I'll throw down a counter there. And you'll notice that there is a staff area back behind that. Uh, it's kind of hard to see with the coloration, but it is there. And that's where the staff, the people who work in the uh, in the shop will actually stand when they're working. So keep that in mind. So we've got the basic shelf there. A nice shelf, which looks slightly better. We have a wall-mounted shelf, which is supposed to be wall-mounted, but you can actually place it anywhere you want. You have a pedestal. You have the medium basic and the large basic. So those are the sh those are the different kinds that you can put in the shop. Next, we have the restaurant, which we'll go ahead and build here. All right, and you've got different kinds of counters. You've got a small and a large counter. And again, you'll have a staff area there, so you can see where those employees are going to stand. All right, you got food counters, which you can click and drag. You have a different kind. That's the same thing I just did. All right, so we got a display fridge, which you can put down however you want. And then you've got different kind of counters for snacks. For sandwiches. Got a coffee machine, beer tap. There's a cooking station for your food employees, which also has a staff area. Uh, you can put down a stove, stainless steel counter, and a kitchen sink. And then, of course, you need a freezer for your food to keep it nice and cool before you cook it. And you may want to put down walls anywhere in here that, that you, as you need them to separate your kitchen from your service area and so forth. All right, and that is for the restaurants and cafes. And then, of course, you have your airplane lounges, which you can put up here. You can put it anywhere, but... And some of these items, like the restaurant items, you can put them Maybe not. All right, so you've got the information desk, just in case they need information while they're in the lounge. Uh, then you've got a buffet table that you can throw down in here. That's how that looks. Now these lounges are intended to be for specific airlines, so you can say any airline, or you can say specific airlines, and then you can have a dedicated lounge for that specific airline. All right, now, along with your restaurants and your airline lounges, you're gonna need seating because people wanna sit down and be comfortable. So you have different kinds of seating. You have your gate seating, which uh, you can see they got that there. You've got different kinds of chairs. You've got square, round, and modern. And these can go pretty much anywhere. You can put them outside, you can put them inside, lounges however you need them to be. There's also some more comfortable chairs, the dining room chairs. Uh, arm chairs they are they are actually called. There are modular sofas which you can do straight, modular corners, uh, the inverted corner. So you have the this kind and then you have that kind. But then randomly thrown in with the sofas is the bar stools. Uh, there's the also uh, there's standard and modern sofas which you can see how they look there. And then there are benches which are mostly for outdoor which are
So we'll throw these down here. You can see those. So that's the standard and the and the modern one. All right, for the tables, we'll go back up here. Look at those tables. Got a square and a round table. And then there is a laptop table, which I believe you do need a... Uh, that might be where the bar stool or a regular chair would come in handy. And again, with the tables, you probably need those too. All right, next section is the decorations which I do not appear to have any of, but we'll look at those. All right, so we got the, f these down here. So you've got a fern, got a banana, the sicket palm, got a larger, a medium fern, medium banana, which look very similar. A larger palm and a holiday tree. Uh, there's also hedges that you can click and drag. There's flower beds, which are actually fairly new. Uh, these have to be in the grass, I believe. Yes, they do. All right, so we got flower beds, which you can do in sections. White flowers, red and yellow, white, and pink are your options with the flower beds. Alright, you can put down trees. And they do change randomly. Alright, there's also rocks. And again, these are somewhat random. And then you can also click and drag pawns shape them differently depending on how you section them out. Alright. That's supposed to be, I think, for statues, but for some reason I don't have any available. Alright. Hol holiday festivities, or festoons. that you can put them on there. All right, then you have different statues, which you can put pretty much anywhere, I believe. So you have a bottle, you have a pilot, an airplane, a knot, and a car. And that is all for the decorations. All right, the last section here is templates which doesn't seem to do anything right here. So if you've downloaded templates, you can search for them and use them here. I'm assuming that's what that's for. I don't have any installed, so I can't confirm that. All right, you have analysis and testing. So you can analyze different paths for uh, as your Starting from this point, and you wanted to go to this point, that's the path that they would take. So, if you were, you can check that for passengers, uh, you can do zone areas, employee path, security officer path, contractor, baggage, vehicle path, aircraft, and those are your path options. Uh, you can do heat map heat maps for display passenger types. You can do display walkable areas. So green is good, red is bad. This one is... I'm not sure what that one does. All right. Display taxi congestion. That'll show conflict points between your taxiways, which I don't seem to have any. See that green one, 
that's also showing that path just where that plane is trying to go. And if there was another one that intersected it, then there would be portions, portions of it that are red. All right, and then we talked about this before, but that's where you can set up security officers. And then there's a paintbrush, so I can paint different sections of the, of the map or of various objects. Building tools, so you can copy paste, so I can drag and copy a portion of my map, paste it somewhere else. This is to, if I drag and save anything, I can save it as a template, which will show up here in the templates category. Uh, the toggle planning mode, so I can go to this, and then anything I build will be planned and not immediately build until I tell it to. And then build planned objects mode. So I can select anything that I build in the planning stage and then it'll start building appropriately. Uh, this create terminal area is for if you have multiple terminals. I only have one so I don't need it, but if I had uh, a section over here and then a section on the other side, then I could use this to create multiple terminals and the passengers would go to one side or the other depending on what they need. And then the last thing is the bulldozer tool, which is basically a click and drag, delete whatever I don't want. That is all of the buttons down here on the bottom. There are other buttons here on the sides for other things, but I will not cover them in this video because it's already 50 minutes long. And I think I've taken up enough of your time. All right, so that's all for the overview of the build options. Uh, like I said, I do have another video that goes more in the depth into baggage claim, and I may do other videos uh, going into depth into other sections as well. Uh, let me know what you think, put it in the comments, and uh, we'll go from there. Thanks for watching.